At this time, we have our guest speaker is on board, I believe. Alex, you're out there? He's on mute. I am. Good evening, sir. How are you? I'm great, Kevin. How are you? Welcome to Mansfield. <laughs> Thank you. It's great to be in Mansfield via camera. Well, now taking over the meeting, you're in charge. We saved you a nice drive by going all, all on Zoom to this time, huh? <laughs> yeah. Do you just want me to jump right into it? Right, please, right now, sir. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you, um, Kevin, Joe, and Deborah, and everyone uh, for giving me the opportunity to come and join here. I don't know if you want me to tell a little bit about, about myself first, and yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, okay, great. Please. Yeah, so um, I'm Alex Bausch. Um, got involved in Massachusetts politics in 2017. Um, after Donald Trump won, my older brother, Adam, has Down syndrome, so hearing Donald Trump mock a disabled news reporter really got got my juices um, flowing, let's just say. Um, and so I've worked on a couple of statewide races uh, in Massachusetts. Um, I worked on Bob Massey's gubernatorial in 2018, ran Massachusetts for the Biden campaign in 2020, and then was involved in an uh, LG campaign this year. And then uh, post the primary, did some coordinating for Massachusetts, uh, New Hampshire, and the DNC. Um, but I just wanted to come on here and kind of, well, first of all, thank people for um, getting involved uh, this cycle. Um, it was a much better year for Democrats than I think uh, people thought it was going to be. And that's because of all of, of all the great work that folks did. So if you knocked on a door, made a phone call, made a donation, wrote a postcard, uh, just a big, a big thank you uh, for that. Um, and I also just kind of wanted to, uh, Joe asked me if I'd come on and kind of talk about now that the elections are over, kind of what's happening, what's or what 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 we can expect to happen. Um uh, in 2023 uh, as 2024, which is crazy that uh, 2024 uh, folks are going to talk about that already. It's like, give us a, give us a little break. Um, but um, when it comes to what's happening in Washington, it's a total blank show. Um, I'm sure, I'm sure people have been paying attention to what's been going on with the Republicans um, in Washington, it took them 15 ballots to uh, get a speaker. Um, and so if it takes them 15 rounds to get a speaker, how are they going to fund um, the government? How are they going to pass bills and things like that? So I think that's that's definitely kind of the main thing to watch. They have like a razor thin majority um, and they have a speaker that is not driven by policy. He's driven by power. Um, so I think that that's something that's definitely going to be able to watch. I think like a, another thing that uh, folks are focused on is the like uh, upcoming debt ceiling debate. Um, and I think that there are, that there are a lot of national people that are um, nervous about that. And with the Republicans having control of the House, however small, it really kind of puts a stop to all the great work that Democrats did uh, the past two years, unfortunately, because I just don't see them wanting to work with the Democratic Senate, uh, Senate and the White House. Um, we can also kind of expect um, the House Republicans to, quote unquote, investigate. Uh, and we know they're going to go after Hunter Biden and his and his laptop, mm -hmm. um, Dr. Fauci and all the masking mandates and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Secretary Mayorkas and all of the uh, complicated things um, at the border. They're going to pin all that on the Biden ad administration, even though the like border crisis has been a thing that President Bush, President Clinton, President Obama, President Trump uh, couldn't also fix. But they're going to make it as if, you know, it was the most perfect thing until uh, President, Bi uh, President Biden came into office. Um but one of like the like good things that I think will happen uh, is that the Democrats are going to be able to approve judges in the Senate a lot quicker uh, because they now expanded their Senate majority lead um, there, which is which is like a really good thing because they can get it out of committee quicker um, and things like that. And then, and then the only other like two major storylines, I think, in D.C. will be um, will Biden run. Um, it's been an interesting week for him, I think. Uh, and I like love. I love uh, President Biden with all this classified information stuff. Um, mm. It's just a bunch of bad faith as usual, but uh, we can expect that 
moving forward and then uh, how many people also run for president on the Republican side. Um, so that's kind of like what's happening in Washington. Um, it's always an interesting time down there, I feel like. Uh, but more, I think, optimistically here in Massachusetts, um, I don't know if folks ended up going to the inauguration. I ended up uh, helping out the inaugural committee, but uh, it was outside of the event being at the garden, and I have a lot of takes on that. Um, it was very cool to see, um, you know, two uh, to be, you know, have our governor and lieutenant governor uh, both be female and all the glass uh, shattering that 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 brings. Um, and also um, on her first day as governor, um, Governor Healy appointed a climate chief, uh, the first in the um, country, the first state in the country to ever have that um, at the cabinet level, uh, which is something that Morris said on the like climb on on her campaign that she was going to be, you know, the the uh, most forward thinking governor when it comes to climate change, which is great. Um, also something that that that's going to be a big uh, topic both in Beacon Hill um, is the um, having um, free college. I think that there's that there's going to be a large debate uh, between us. Uh, Senate President Spilka and uh, Moore's office about how they kind of go 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 about that, but that's something that's definitely going to um, take place. Um, there's also going to be uh, conversations with the child tax credit um, and and uh, things along those lines, and then obviously fixing the MBTA, which is always um, an interesting um, environment and things like that. Uh, so just like a lot of, um, I think, more exciting times in the state here, because it's the first time in like a while, eight years that 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 will have um, a Democratic governor and Democratic Senate uh, and House here in the Commonwealth. And it was also great that we were able to flip some seats uh, in the state house and the state legislature here, here in Massachusetts. So um, I normally hate when I just talk and talk and talk, uh, but just wanted to come on and kind of give, you know, thank, thank people first and foremost, because I think one thing that campaigns don't do enough of is thanking people that get involved. They kind of view people as guinea pigs and stuff like that. So at first, just wanted to call, come on and thank and say thank you for folks that I uh, got involved on uh, the cycle and kind of what uh, we can, what, what, some of the stuff that we can expect moving forward. Happy to take any questions though. Anybody have any questions? I don't see any. Joe, hey, Joe, has, Joe has his hand up. Can I, I don't know how to do the chat thing about raising your hand, which makes me the second worst in technology after Kevin out here. Um, <laughs> you can, but you can go, you did like, go like that, that's good. Yeah, I did, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, the how do you think our democratic congressional delegation will do you know from a democratic state and obviously very democratic office holders etc but now we now they're in a republican house um what effect do you think that has on the influence um, well, I will just say this, and I know like some people will say that he's just saying it just to say it, but I really do think it. I've been to a, I've been to many um, events when President Biden has been in either Massachusetts or in New Hampshire, and every time he's in Massachusetts, he says that Massachusetts has the most powerful federal delegation in the country. And when you actually like go through it, I think that that's a pretty strong argument to make. Um, and now we have um, Catherine Clark is now the number two Democrat in the House, and previously she wasn't that. Um, and so I think that um, even though that, like, Chairman Neal is not the chairman anymore, uh, Chairman McGovern is not the chair anymore, but they're the highest ranking Democrats. Um, and so I just think, and if you look through the at at, at administration there's a lot of former warren people that are now you know 
deputy secretaries um, and things like that. And I know that the Biden ad, ad administration listens to Senator Warren when um, she calls. Uh, so I think they're they're only growing in their uh, power and influence. And and I think that like we are really lucky to have the federal delegation that we have from Neil to McGovern to Auchincloss to Clark to Presley uh, to Lynch to Keating to Warren and Markey, I think, and Seth too. So I think, I think that it's a great delegation and I think uh, they're just only going to get more, more and more powerful, especially when we take the house back in 24. I think we will take it back in 24. I think that's highly likely. I think yeah. the Senate is what we have to worry about in the next cycle. Yeah, the Senate map is not favorable um, because they got to defend a Montana seat, got to defend an Ohio seat, got to defend a West Virginia seat, Arizona. Yeah. So. Sally, did you have your hand up? No? Okay, sorry. Sorry, Alex. Go ahead. No worries. Anybody else? I don't see anybody else. Oh, Mark. 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 Yeah, I'm wondering, you know, you mentioned um, the classified documents and how that's going to be a, you know, a, it, it's going to be an angle whether or not it's, um, <laughs> you know, a well-meaning or, or one that they actually believe. But um, how do you think we, we respond to that? Because on its face, it's it's not a bad bad faith argument. <laughs> like it's it, yeah, it, it's pretty disappointing, and it it feels like it invalidates a lot of what people have spent the last few years saying about how obvious classified documents are and how uh, clear a mistake this has to be. That now we're like, oh well, you know, or, or sometimes they end up in your garage, and and that's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of the way I would answer it, and you know, each person can you know, answered their own way. Like, cause when my like Republican friends have called me and they've called me like all week about this is like, yeah, it wasn't a good, like they made a mistake. Uh, they probably shouldn't have like done, they probably um, should have been a little bit more thorough when they, when they did that. Uh, but the Biden people notified the right people right away. Um, they're, they're being very, cooperative they're not fighting it they're not calling it you know fake news or anything um like that and they and they should take it seriously and they're they've um welcomed the special um investigation into all that and i think once that's done uh it will kind of clear of any criminal wrongdoing um and i think just making that case to people that they've that they notified the right people right away and that it wasn't like a year long struggle with it. Sally? Now I have a question. Thanks. Yeah, wonderful. So there are some initiatives by the National uh, Democratic Party for getting out the vote and so on. What are the, uh, what are the assessments after all of this? What worked well? Um, what initiatives are you specifically speaking of? Just like for their getting out the vote and how they kind of did that or? Yeah, there was some, a joke, can you help me out on this? There are some programs that people could go to on uh, door knocking, canvassing and so on. And I will vote. And, you know, there, there are yeah. different ones that, that were initiated in this last cycle. Yeah, I think kind of the thing that was really successful, um, the cycle is um, they use a new dialer, this cycle that was invented uh, or created by former organizers of the Biden campaign and Warren's presidential and things like that. That was just a lot smoother for people to to like go and use. And so folks could just hop onto a Zoom call and like make calls into Georgia and some of these other battleground states. And I know that every state that the national folks called into democrats had like um they did better than expected um and they've even won some races there um 
like I, I remember when I was helping out in October and November, you know, we were calling into Nevada, Arizona, Michigan, uh, Pennsylvania, Georgia. Um, and like, those are places that the, that the national party did well, there's obviously places where, uh, the party didn't do as well. Um, and it, it's always comes down to allocating resources. There's not enough money to go into every single state. Um, so I know that people were a little bit surprised that the party didn't do as well in California and New York, um, as traditionally they do. Uh, but I think the places where the party targeted their, um, registering folks to vote, knocking on doors, sending texts, uh, sending phone calls into those battleground states was really good because those were also states that the president won in 2020 and the president is expecting to win in 2024 as well. Okay. Anybody else? Tyler, did you have something? No? Said that... Uh... I was just asking about the dude. Well, I just wrote in that I did use a dialer to speak to in Virginia. Democrat committee had something going. Yeah, there there was a special election in Virginia this week uh, for a state house race, I believe, state house or state senate in Virginia. Um, and the Democrat won by like 400 votes. And I know that the DNC had been making calls there for like two weeks now. So it just kind of once again, always goes to show you the importance of doing this work. Um, and I think now that the Virginia State House is held by Democrats by like one person. Um, so it just goes to show you how close these races are. Yeah. Hey, Joe again. Um, I guess I want to, maybe this is more of a comment. I look at the number of recounts we had this time and the number of close elections. And I look how most places, um, I don't know about most, but many places are now purple. I think people are getting the idea and we really have to promote to our own base that it is really, really critical that you vote all the time. I, I think I think the at least the national level, maybe most places at the state and local election, um, we're probably not going to see landslide elections anymore. Not in our lifetimes. I think we're entering an era of a very uh, split electorate, and getting out the vote is probably going to be more important than going after the minuscule number of people who are, who are, you know, really swing voters or undecided. And I want to know, I'd like to know, Alex, your perspective on that. Yeah. And I also think people are, a lot more people are going to like unenrolled or they're not like registering with a party anymore. Cause I know now in Massachusetts, the most amount of people are unenrolled voters, even though a lot of them lean democratically. Um, so that's like another thing that, uh, is kind of that that like we're starting to like see with like the um, extreme sometimes on both sides um, that people just are kind of fed up and they'll go unenrolled and they'll vote election by election. But we really do need um, people to vote every election, um, especially when it comes to like the like town and local level, because like that's where a lot of the policy gets made. And I also think, too, I agree with you about the number of people who are unenrolled. I don't think they're truly like, I don't, I don't think many of them are really truly ticket splitting centrist right. voters. I think they belong in one camp or the other. They might have their own reasons for not belonging to a party. I'm even surprised at the number of people who are independent because they think the Democrats aren't left enough or they, they don't register with Republicans because they don't think they're right enough. So um, I, I, think, I think the center, I don't know why, but, but I think the center is definitely uh, losing ground while, while the, the left and the right both grow. Yeah, yeah I think that that's, there's definitely a case to be made for that. Okay. Okay, I think that's it. We all set? Oh, Alex, I think we're all set. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Welcome to we'll stay if you'd like to. Pardon? 
it's, you, you don't have to. Don't don't feel, don't feel don't like have to. No, don't have to. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for having me in Mansfield. <laughs> Come back again, please. I will. In person someday. Okay. Right. Thank you. Have a good night. Yeah, you too.